Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making the Chinese black bean pork sans black beans. If you guys like dim sum, if this is kind of a dish you kind of like, then stick around, hit that subscribe button, and watch me cook. So these are the list of ingredients that I chose to use. Use your substitutes as necessary to keep this diabetic friendly and gluten free, which it mostly is. I decided to use the St. Louis Spare pork ribs and mine is a larger portion obviously I gave you guys the ingredients for at least two pounds worth. I chose these because I wanted to have more meat on my spare ribs. Now when I did my research with this ingredient pretty much everybody uses the exact same thing. How they cook it might be slightly different but most people generally just steam it. I have seen some where people do fry them but it takes a lot longer. But here we go with all the ingredients. As you guys can see, I'm just throwing it all inside of a bowl and then I'm going to mix this up. And it will get a little bit harder to mix in the beginning just because of the cornstarch that's gonna be settled on the bottom. So all you wanna do is just break up the cornstarch as best as you can. And mix this up until everything is nicely blended together. The blending portion of this does not take any time at all, so it's going to go by really fast. This whole entire recipe actually goes by really, really fast. It's super easy to make and absolutely delicious to eat. So obviously, you guys just saw my garlic that went in there because obviously I'm cooking seven pounds worth of this, but you guys don't need that much garlic. It's only going to be six garlics. So just refer back to the ingredients in the very beginning of the video just so you guys can know exactly what it is that you need. For your portions, you can divide that right into half to make a pound of it if you'd like. But you're gonna want the two. And excuse all the camera shaking here. I didn't realize how close everything was to my tripod and things shook. <laughs> That's all that happened. But you guys know how I like to do my ginger, have them frozen, go ahead and peel them, clean them off. Look at this, it's going crazy. So basically you just peel, mince, and throw it all inside of your sauce bowl again with your garlic and your uh, ginger, which is minced up, or you can grate it right into it. Again, mix everything right up, and that's all you need to do. Once you are done mixing everything up, go ahead and grab your plastic gloves just so you don't have to touch the raw meat if you don't want to. Now, my pork is not completely defrosted. I do like to keep it a little bit um, frozen just because it's easier to slice through, sort of. You'll see, but just grab your pork ribs and then cut right in between the bones where it's the meaty part. You don't hit the bones, and it's going to be a lot easier to just slice right through. And because it's not completely defrosted, it just kind of stands there and it doesn't wobble around, which is the way I prefer to do it. And if you guys saw, I kind, I kind of scored it in a way just so I know where it is that I'm going to be cutting. So that kind of helps you. It's a guideline. And if it's too skinny at the end, if you don't, if there's no bone actually at the end, then go ahead and keep more of the meat on there. Again, all you have to do is throw everything right inside of your sauce bowl once you're done chopping everything up and then mix. Everything is obviously on the bottom, so we're just gonna carefully move everything towards the top, and it'll be easily marinating itself while we're doing all of this. And you wanna marinate it for at least 30 minutes, but if you don't, you can actually cook it right away as well. And by the way, the sans beans part, because I didn't have any of these salted black beans, which you only need two tablespoons of, and just chop that up and throw that into the sauce before you start actually steaming everything together. But you can find them in the stores in a bag or in a jar. And the jar ones usually is like a garlic flavor or something, but you can use that as well. But I chose not to because I didn't have any. And it still worked out fine. It was ab absolutely delicious. My kids demolished these things so fast. But now let's grab a bowl or whatever plate that you have that can be placed inside of your electric pressure cooker to cook inside of. And if you guys have been following me, then you guys know that I use the Pyrex 7 inch glass dish to throw right into my instant pot. I'm obviously going to have a lot more remaining and I'm going to be doing mine in like three parts because I have so much but if you have only the two pounds or less the, this will work just fine in one simple dish. If you have a dish that kind of flares out that would probably work best just because you know you want to make sure you get everything cooked and everything's not kind of sitting on top of each other. So go ahead and use one of those or just use the Pyrex and it'll work just fine. Now I didn't realize that I already had my pressure cooker on so it was already steaming and boiling in there. You guys are going to use one and a half cups of water for your pressure cooker. If you guys have seen me again in the past and you guys know that I like to make these handles to help put these down into our Instapot or just to help grab them up 
when we take them out of the Instant Pot because it's going to be so hot and you don't want to touch the sides of it or any part of it. So all we do now is just close it, seal it, and start it up. What you will be doing is cooking yours on high pressure for 15 minutes and then just go ahead and release it, quick release it, and this is how it's going to turn out. Looks amazing, I think. We all loved it. I'm going to tell you now, we finished this thing so fast I couldn't believe it. But to carefully remove it, just grab those handles that we already made and then we are going to slowly pull it up and carefully place it somewhere where it's going to, you know, on top of a trivet or something just to be safe. Now here's the thing, we loved it, it was amazing, but my kids had a hard time trying to eat it because they were smaller chunks and they were just so chewy. So what I did was cook it for an hour and 15 minutes just to make sure that they would be fall off the bone and they were so, so good. And I wanted to show you guys how good they were because I wanted to throw in this picture right here. This might be a little bit too much for some of you, but I really needed to show you guys how clean the bones look once you cook it in there for a little bit longer. Well, about an hour more longer and it, the meat just fell off the bone and we just loved it so much more it was easier it wasn't very chewy and tough tender perfectly cooked I don't know we loved it my recommendations personally thank you again for stopping by and watching my channel I really do appreciate you guys especially the new subbies that are coming in here if you guys like this please make sure you like it and share it subscribe it recommend me to everyone that you can and until the next meal Thank you again for watching. Watch me cook.